there's a difference here between the Marxist and the woke ideologists, right? You have the Marxists saying, we can solve all this once we overthrow the capitalists, right? That's their argument. And then the woke ideologist says, so my revolution has to wait for yours, right? There is some tension here. That's why this is not just Marxism. But what is the most key, I would say, to the woke ideology is this notion of identity politics. It also began as a Marxist construct back in the 70s, but in its current state, it's based on postmodern theory. Back in the 70s, when we were fighting this notion from the point of view of identity politics, it was the goal was civil rights and sexual liberation, right? Those were the movements that were happening. But the postmodernists now argue that these only serve to support the dominant groups and their oppression, right? That's why actually, if you talk to the critical race theorists today, they're not big fans of Martin Luther King Jr., right? He just, he didn't solve anything from their point of view, right? Anyway, they've moved on. So if identity is socially constructed, the woke ideologists argue that we need, we have to embrace that identity that's being given to us and not resisted. And, and that for the purposes of political struggle. It's a source of empowerment. My identity is my position in the social grid from which I fight my oppressors. Again, identity politics is now grounded in these grids that I showed you before of oppressor and oppressed. And that's why Marxism t did talk about oppression, but it, it is now the, the, the currency based on this postmodern philosophy. This is actually a quote from my article, which I want to plug in the New World Encyclopedia. Oh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the quote in a minute. Yeah, it's not on the screen. But my quote is this, and I, it's my article on critical theory. No, excuse me, this is my article on identity politics. I have a going on critical theory as well. We have a great encyclopedia. I'm taking a chance to plug it. It's a shameless plug. So they adopted the view, that is the postmodernists, that political struggle now meant that society must affirm their marginalized and excluded identities. So it means I'm not fighting for a place to be part of a larger collective. You have to embrace me based on my sense of marginalization and my sense of oppression. That's what you have, because that's, that's, that's who I am, that's how I'm defined. So if identity is socially constructed, these ideologists argued that we have to embrace that and use that to fight. And that, by the way, in DEI is what they mean by inclusion. They don't mean they want to be included in the larger society. Inclusion means you accept them in their marginalized and excluded identities. Okay? And in a way, again, we're back to Descartes. We never really left him. It's, it, this is the complete realization of the idea of the cogito. All truth emanates from me. It was previously the thinking being, and now I'm the feeling subject, but it all emanates from me. And as we're going to see as we look at more at identity, right, it's my self-definition is what's however I choose to. So any notion of good and evil have been redefined to fit the oppression narrative, right? And that's why... You see, you're familiar with Nicole Hannah-Jones' 1619 Project, right? So in the liberal worldview, society could be reformed. In the Marxist worldview, society could be rebuilt after a revolutionary transformation. In the postmodern worldview, society is created on the basis of discrimination. Oppression is built into the system. You can fight power with power, but you can't tame it. You must destroy the system of oppression. But even if you do, there's no utopian outcome, just endless struggle against oppression. Right? Let's think about that for a second. Right? It, it is the most nihilistic uh, of, of views, right? Ben, have you listened to them? I can try. Give me a second. 
In the liberal worldview, society could be reformed. In the Marxist worldview, society could be rebuilt after a revolutionary transformation. In the postmodern worldview, society is created on the basis of discrimination. Oppression is built into the system. It is, yeah, you can fight power with power, but you can't tame it, right? You can, you must destroy the system of oppression, but even if you do, there's no utopian outcome, just endless struggle against oppression. Well, critical race theory began as a Marxist legal critique, but as I say, under the influence of Kimberly Crenshaw and others, it's transitioned to a postmodern worldview, right? Again, these are examples of what I've just been saying. Racism is entrenched into the fabric of society and is intersectional, right? Which means you can be oppressed on multiple levels at the same time. Frank, even you too can be oppressed. Uh, and so the dominant narratives in education, we're going to talk about education in a minute for you teachers, like objectivity and meritocracy, colorblindness, equal opportunity, they have to be challenged, right? They're parts of the oppression. And the experiential knowledge of people of color is legitimate and crucial to understanding inequality. So this is the, what they call counter storytelling, right? They have to speak. Th that means speaking my truth. Right? And then it has to race and racism has to be analyzed across all the different spectrums, right? Yeah, this anyway, we'll go on. This is, I'm not going to read the whole quote, but. Racial oppression is systemic, which means it's built into the system. The reality is racism has been woven into the social fabric of our society and casting a blind eye to it or not acknowledging it will not improve things, right? So we have to examine how racism is built into the system, right? If this were true, you'd be able to define what it is and how you can remove it. But actually, that's not the point. The point is it can't be removed, right? So we just have to spend our time focusing upon how racist we are. There may be even some truth to it, but how, how is that going to help us? So this is my question. How, how's it going to make us better? Okay. And the same is true for gender as well. Gender oppression is systemic. Right. Under, okay, you're familiar now, Marx, Marxism was material, based on material. Based on Marxism, these are the identifiers, right? It's modern. I'm not going to get into, into structural and post-structuralism. That's a little too deep in the weeds. But it, it's based on the old Marxist critical theory. And the goal, again, was equality. Some notion that we could all be, find a way to become equal. But... In the postmodernist rubric, based on deconstruction, the goal is difference, right? The goal is divisive, right? It's you have to accept me in my difference, but you can't understand my difference because you don't experience it. Yeah, it's it's it is challenging. Yeah, you have to, but you have to accept me in my marginalized state. That's the point I want to make. Right? So, if you wonder why transgenderism has suddenly become such a hot-button issue, it's because it represents the ultimate attack on identity, on biology, and the farthest links that you can currently go in an attempt at self-definition, right? The, ide the ideologists see it as the tip of the spear in the fight against gender oppression. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's a, it's a sliding scale. All right, so those of you who are in education, have you seen the gender-bred person before? You have, right? Of course you have. And you're just a parent. You should be aware of this because this is what your children are being taught, right? Gender is a sliding scale, and people are encouraged to identify as gender fluid, right? These are the binaries, but the point is that it's fluid. You can move back and forth as you choose, right? 
based on the day of the week, I don't know. Gender identity is the clearest attack on both science and objective truth. It asserts, again, gender is socially constructed, as is everything in postmodernism. So they call biology, if you believe in biology, they call biology essentialist, right? Which, I guess, means that some people still consider it a fact, right? But again, because the postmodernists believe that science, enlightenment is a source of oppression, and science is, is one of the high moments of the Enlightenment, right? So we need to make sure that biology doesn't stand in the way of expressing my own lived experience, right? Yes? Your identity is an attack on biology, and what else boasts? Okay. I said gender identity is the clearest attack on science and objective truth. Yeah. And then biology is the science that they're attacking. Yeah, literally, they reject biology because if you accept biology, there aren't 97 different genders. But the cutting edge of uh, gender theory is what they call queer theory. And it's queer not only in the sense of gay, because actually there are gay people who don't consider themselves queer and there's queers who aren't gay, right? It's the cutting edge because it is based on deconstruction and it's meant, it's designed to be subversive and to break down all distinctions, even those that were previously considered untouchable. Forever, the gay community has argued that homosexuality was based on biological innateness, right? But that is not the position of the queer theorists. They attack that. Nothing is essential. There's even room for tremendous, not just disagreement, but attacks, internal attacks within the postmodern world. I say queer theory is probably the pinnacle of woke ideology because it's an attack on human identity. And hearteningly, even the Pope, and I'm not Catholic, but even the Pope rejected this recently as a grave threat to human dignity. These are the elements of the ideology. So this is woke ideology as opposed to the philosophy that we looked at. <laughs>